Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I thought we would build something nostalgic and of course in Much Props fashion we have to build it much bigger than it needs to be. I remember when I was a little kid kind of connecting to playing video games and me and my brothers would bond over who gets the controller next. Uh, but I remember getting our first NES as kids and really, really, really enjoyed Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt and, and all those games that came with it. But the one that I think is the most iconic and was by far my favorite and probably my, my brother's favorite too was Super Mario Brothers 3. So it's me, Mario. To pay tribute to that gaming experience, I thought, why not make an old Super Mario Brothers 3 cartridge and make it massive? Like, like four times bigger than it needs to be. Sounds like a game plan. So today we are going to build a super-sized Super Mario Brothers 3 Nintendo Entertainment System cartridge. Let's get to building. To start off, I thought I would show a little template making on this relatively simple shape. I looked at the official specs for an original Nintendo cartridge, found a decent front and back image, and printed them to scale. The cartridges are 5.25 inches by 4.75 inches by 1.75 inches. To make it as big as my poster board would allow, I just multiplied all the measurements by 4 and started marking off details. Lots of math involved. Once the pattern was done, it was time to cut my pieces out of foam. I cut the base out of 10 millimeter EVA, cut on the highlighted edges of my template, and then traced that onto some six millimeter EVA. I kept it simple and made everything straight cuts. The template cover page explains all the colors, markings, and extra instructions to help you out. My templates are always free and down in the description below the video. I traced the 6mm places on the 10mm foam so that I would know where to lay down the contact cement and help me align the long pieces up in a minute. After the barge was set up and no longer wet to the touch, I tacked the parts together making a 16mm top and bottom. The thickness of the original NES cartridge is 3 fourths of an inch, so to convert it to my new oversized one, I need the thickness to be equal to 3 inches altogether. The thickness of the top and bottom together is 1 and a quarter inches. That means I need this strip to be 1 and 3 quarters of an inch. To support the middle of the build, I added some strips in there also as support structures. I put contact cement down on the edge and the base and cut it to size as I went. Then I tacked on the other side once I was done. Thank you. 
I marked a one inch guide on the three sides on the back and cut out the bevel with a box cutter. I tried to get as clean a pull as I could with my cuts, but ended up needing to do a little bit of sanding here in a minute. A low tech way to get some nice even surfaces on some jagged cuts that you may have messed up a little bit on. Just simply super glue some sandpaper onto a flat surface. I found some scrap thin wood pieces laying around that I made into some thick sand and sticks. Make long even bases and work your way up in grit count. I started with about 120 and ended with 320. For the little ridges, I cut out a bunch of strips, tacked them down with painter's tape, and then contact cemented both surfaces. Then I used a piece of corrugated plastic that just so happened to be the right thickness that I needed for a spacer, and then spaced the sides and on my way up the ridge. On the back are some raised letters in the small panel that reads patent pending made in Japan. I tried to burn it into foam this way with the laser cutter and the letters were just too small and it kept melting all over the place. So I decided to do the opposite and make it a recess instead. I also went ahead and changed it to patent pending made by Much Props instead. The side grips were easy to knock out. I burned some lines into some 6mm foam and then cut them into their final shape. Then I contact cemented the grip bottom and the base side to permanently join these two pieces together.
two coats of Plasti Dip. Then I hit it with some gray spray paint as a base with some yellow in the label area while I was at it. In order to get the image and the lettering in proportion and in the right spot, I decided to just use transfer paper and trace a printed out label. You could always just glue down a printed one, but my printer was leaving like these lines on my prints, so I decided just to do it by hand instead. Figured it'd look more clean. To get all the base colors down, I just used these acrylic paint pens that I get at the hobby store. They're pretty good as far as coverage and they dry really quick. For me, it's easier to control a paint pen than it is to control a paint brush and I can limit the amount of brush strokes that I have on my surface. For the rest of the colors that I didn't have paint pens for, I used some Platifex acrylic paint. Once the base colors dried after a couple of coats, I went back and decided to add the little gradient colors that you see on the reference image to make them at least kinda close. Then I went back and painted the black lines again to cover up all my over paint. The chip that sticks out of the bottom of the cartridge, I just made it out of some sheets of 1 16th inch styrene. I score the top to its length and width that I needed, then snap the cut in two. I added a hole in one of the corners so that I could hang it up to paint it outside. Each side got a nice quick coat of some green spray paint. To make the gold metallic contact pads for the pins that connect in the console, I'm going to spray paint this on as well. All I have to do is mask off the areas I want to stay green. I could measure this and be precise, but I figured you're really not going to see it that much when it's on display and I don't have the patience to get those spacings exact, so we're just going to rough it. Time to finish off the details. I cut a slit into the bottom of the cartridge, added a little hot glue, and wedged the chip into place. Then on the back I glued this printed paper of the caution label. I just pulled an image off a of Google search and cropped out what I needed. I had to tape it together because my printer paper wasn't big enough to stretch across the area that I needed it to.
last step, time to dirty it up. I kept it simple with just a little bit of watered down brown acrylic paint to age my edges and crevices, smush it down into the cracks and wipe away most of it with a paper towel to call it done and looked like a kid has put his dirty fingers all over it for years. And we are finished. Here is the end result. It uh, is obviously a bit bigger than probably needs to be. Uh, definitely makes me feel a little bit smaller than normal. Uh, I like the way it turned out. It definitely brings back those good vibes. Initially, I had thought about putting straps on the back of it and making it like a shield and like a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids scenario. Uh, but after I got it this far, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm just going to leave it as is. I even thought about not dirtying it up. Yeah, no. Uh, so I, I did put a little bit of dirt on it because none of our video game cartridges growing up were ever as clean as the brand new ones were. I definitely enjoy this build and hopefully you will too and maybe you'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to make something super cool and big and awesome and not even have some practical function other than maybe as a decoration on your wall or sitting on a bookshelf somewhere. It's where mine will be. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. For those of you who don't know, you know, back in the day when they wouldn't work, you'd have to blow on the cartridge and then, you know, stick it in and move it over to the side and push down. Like, if you know, you know. So, uh, let's try. All right, let's see if I got the magic touch here. Got it! If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see me make more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here over on my Patreon. Let's build a bigger, better, more creative community together.